Hey there, so in this video we are going to be talking about how to light your scene. This video is specifically uh, about static lighting, lighting indoors for your uh, mobile project. This project is an ArcViz pro uh, project, so if you're not familiar with it, ArcViz projects are um, supposedly being used for architecture uh, purposes only. I mean, you can create such a great looking environment in games as well, but I mean, it's gonna be really, really heavy. Um, so let's get started. We are going to be creating this project specifically for mobile. Okay, uh, and the first episode is gonna be about how to light the whole scene. Um, first thing first, I've downloaded this project here ArcViz Interior, it's um, free. You can just go ahead and download it and open it up. The first thing that I have to say is that don't use Unreal Engine 5.2. We have to use GPU Light Mass, and GPU Light Mass doesn't work on. Uh, I mean, it's broken, it works theoretically, but it's completely broken, so you can't really use it. I'm using Unreal Engine 5.1 uh, as of right now. You can go ahead and try the new Unreal Engine 5.3, but I'm not sure if it's going to work out well for you. Um, so when you cr uh, open up the project, it's going to be based on ray tracing. So the first thing that you have to do is go to the project settings, edit, project settings, and type in ray trace support hardware ray tracing must be on because we are going to be using gpu light mass it's uh, probably uh, on by default so if it's on by default you don't need, really need to do anything else about it um, so the next thing i mean we had to do it it's like the last step uh, how to open the project with specifically for Unreal engine 5.1 so if you come in here, you type in create project, uh, you can browse uh, where it's going to be downloaded and you can select the engine version. It doesn't really matter, just download it, hit create. You don't really need to have this version. Um, and then come into the downloaded folder, right click, switch on the engine version, and then you have to select 5.1, not 5.2. Oh, that's important. 5.2 doesn't work. And then just open it up. You don't need to compile anything. Then come into the project settings. Hardware ray tracing is important. And then virtual texture. I'd recommend you completely disable virtual texture. Um, you can use it though. It's not just something you will necessarily need so you you might better off with just disabling it the only thing that i can confidently say is that uh, virtual texture light maps don't work on android and ios virtual textures however work on some devices and work on a lot and does and don't work on a lot of devices so you will be better off just by just disabling it and not ever use visual texturing. Um, and definitely, if you're not using, I mean, if you're using Unreal Engine 5, you will have SM5 and SM6, which I'm right now I'm off with SM5 and it's, it's been fine. Uh, and the default RHI must be DirectX 12. Then edit plugins type in GPU light mass this one must be enabled as well then restart the engine I mean it's definitely um, show you shown you this thing here this um, this warning here that you have to restart the editor restart it now then it has to compile a lot of shaders of course Uh, and then you'll be having a scene which has a lot of lights in it. It has directional light. It has a lot of uh, point lights. Uh, this map's name is ArcViz underline RT. It's specifically built for uh, using with 
dynamic ray tracing you don't need that we're working on mobile we have to bake everything out so what I ended up doing I deleted pretty much all the lights in the scene so if you come in here I don't have a directional light what I have though uh, is one red light here and one here so if you come in here in the light section you have the red light you can just drag them into the scene and then there are some options here in the details panel uh, intensity should be something that's uh, that's going to make everything visible in the scene and it's got some really nice soft shadows because this is why we're using GPU light mass you can easily just go ahead and uh, use this one build lighting only the CPU based uh, light baking uh, procedure but I wouldn't recommend doing that because GPU light mass just great let's look at look at the result we have right now um, it's just great so you have to use GPU light mass um, so we're going to be using two rec lights uh, attenuation radius is the default one I mean not the default one just a little bit too, uh, more than that uh, I changed the source width and source height to almost be as big as the window itself so somehow simulating the light that's coming from the window and both lights must be static GPU light mass only works with um, uh, static lights so that's something else to note then you will uh, need the GPU light mass here if you I mean you'll probably don't have it uh, so coming here in the build sec uh, section GPU light mass and there you go you have it right here you can see that I've changed some of the settings here we'll talk about that in a second the first thing that you have to do is uh, okay I have a scene I want to know how it's gonna look because you'll you'll uh, you won't have this scene with these results the first time you uh, you bake the lighting a bit baking the lighting is a procedure it's gonna take a while some hours maybe some days some days sometimes uh, the most important thing is that you you'll face a lot of problems the most important thing is that you solve problems one by one one at a time so take it slowly don't pressure yourself it's gonna take a while to fix everything so what I'd say you do then the first time you open up the GPU light mass is uh, viewport real time is off this one shouldn't be checked so disable this one uh, G GI samples is by default set to 512 maybe reduce it to 256 uh, quality multiplier is 4 by default maybe reduce it to something like 3 and this quality is uh, by default 128 reduce it to 64 you just want to know how the scene will look uh, and it's gonna give you a result in like 30 seconds based on what GPU you're using so it's pretty fast GPU lights mass pretty fast it's not like you have to wait for two hours like the CPU um, light mass it's, it's, it's really fast and um, useful and then you'll have a lot of problems so first of all you won't be getting this uh, good looking I mean it's, it's not really looking good but I'm, I'm gonna talk that about a second um, so you'll see a lot of light leaking you'll see a lot of problems like this one I've uh, deliberately left this one here you have to fix these issues you have to fix well you'll have a lot of light leakings you'll have a lot of uh, so this one is not as great you'll have a lot of these problems um, that you have to fix okay so the first thing that you have to do is for example this one right here uh, if you open up the mesh you have to check every mesh every pl problematic mesh if you're not seeing a uh, logical shadow somewhere or shadow doesn't look good you have to open up the mesh you have to check the UVs that's the most important part so 
we have three UVs. This is probably the best for light mass. So we go ahead in the light map coordinate index. It's by default it's selecting the second light mass UV channel to this one exactly. This is the best uh, the best UV for light map we have right now. So this is not the problem if you're facing any problems. Maybe light map resolution is low. 64 is pretty low for an for an arc V scene. So what I'd suggest you go ahead and do, I mean in this project specifically if you go into the details in the lighting you'll see uh, overridden light map resolution. This is most probably changed in this uh, project specifically to something like 12, 24, something ridiculously low. So make sure that you have at least 128 or 256 for every object in your scene. I know that we're working on mobile, we'll, fi we'll fix that problem later on. Right now all we have to care about is the quality in the scene. So go ahead and check all the meshes in the scene. This mesh is 512, okay cool. This mesh is 64, okay if it's 64 is really low. So do we have a problem here? No, I don't think so. This mesh is 64. Do we have a problem? No, it looks good. So we don't really need to change anything. This one's 512. Do we have a problem? Hmm, doesn't look bad. I mean, it's, it was uh, 64 by default. I've cranked it up to 512. But if you're still not happy with it, I mean, it doesn't look that bad. It's like, meh, it can be better. But there's a catch here. We're not looking at the scene in our Android uh, previewer. We have to go into the settings, preview rendering level, and we have to uh, look at everything in Android ES3.1. So this is what we're going to see in mobile. It's a little bit different. We're gonna have to do a lot of th different things to fix it, like reflection. Reflection is definitely fine. The reflection is not built, that's no problem. But if you pay close attention, there are some problems that do not exist in SM5 Reviewer. We can't really solve those problems. So, whatever. I mean, if something looks really good in SM5 but doesn't look as good in Android Reviewer, means that you better let it go it's gonna stay that way anyway so um, these two are black just because I have to build the lighting once again uh, because I've changed something in them uh, I was talking about the uh, this one here the table so it doesn't look bad when you compare it with Android I mean this is like one of the best quality possible that we can get in Android so you don't really need to bother yourself 512 is like the best quality you can get from it so that's something else to note um, everything looks good but make sure that for every mesh you have to go ahead in the mesh make sure that they have a UV channel um, this one's really heavy and make sure that the overridden light map resolution is enough 64 32 16 these are not the values that we're looking for we have to change them to something much much better than that so what if we did all of that and some meshes don't look good anyway whatever we did they don't look good like this one um, so this is one of the meshes that, if you can see, overridden light map resolution is 2048. The mesh itself has two uh, UV channels. So one UV channel is for the material itself. One UV channel is for the lighting. This is the material um, UV channel, and this is the lighting UV channel. It should work, right? If you come in here in the light map coordinate index, it's pointing out this one. So it should work, but it doesn't. What can we do about it? Um, we have to export this mesh out. So it's like, find it in the content browser. 
right click asset action export to somewhere and then we don't need the collision level of detail or morph targets make sure these are unchecked we're using fvx 2013 uh, and hit export if you're using blender uh, I am going to show you how it's done in blender but if you're going to use the 3d studio max you have to google it it's like you have to google create a second channel in uh, my second UV channel in my mesh um, it's easy it's not something that you'd uh, that it will make you uh, make a hard time for you but my recommendation is that go ahead and download the blender for yourself it's like the best application out there so we have blender here um i've already imported my file using this one import fbx uh and then in i have to i need to have two screens i have one object mode and i have to go into the edit mode uh, and make sure i can select everything and this one's in the uh, uv editor okay Oh, by the way, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you are exporting some mesh, uh, make sure that all the materials are in there. So if you have a material slot that's not being assigned by a material, like all of them are just world, uh, the default UE4 material, UE5 material, you are going to get one material in Blender. So make sure you assign some material to them. So later on you'll have uh, three materials and all, all the materials that you have inside Unreal in the Blender. That's really important to note. So if you come in here, uh, go ahead into the UV maps, this one here. So right now you can see, I mean, I've already fixed it, uh, but if you can see, we have two UV maps. The first one was like really, really horrible, like this one. So we need to fix it really um, we have to fix it how we can fix it uh if you select everything uv smart uv project doesn't matter just the default value the second one uv uh smart uv project this one should be a little bit different so what i always do is just go ahead and uh, in the island margin put like a 0.001 to it so it's a little bit different so if you pay attention it's a little bit different that's enough for Unreal Engine to know that these are two different UV maps and then come back into object mode file export fvx and then give it a loca um, locate destination and then uh, we don't need a batch mode or anything we don't have an animation we don't have an armature so it will not export anything so just export it and come back into the unreal at import uh this one's what i exported from blender and just double click on it and you are going to be just import everything you don't need to create new materials or anything and if you have any problem really i don't right now i don't want to, to um, import it once again uh, but if you have any problems with importing stuff into the unreal engine it's not that hard you can really easily go ahead and uh, search in google i'm not going to be talking about it it's going to be having a lot of details in it if you don't know how to do that i suggest you go ahead and research a little bit about that it's already taking too long by the way and then we um export something right it has three materials all the materials we needed it has three uv channels so this these two are what we created in blender and this is what unreal has created for us we already know that this one's not working right so uv channel one is what i believe will be the most accurate so i'm going i'm going to go come in here light map coordinate index one and then i have to go ahead and make sure that the overridden light map resolution is enough 256 is apparently not enough we have some uh light leaking here and there so i 
go ahead and give it a value of something like 10 24 to see how it looks and if that didn't work I have to go ahead and try to change the UV a little, try to fix the UV a little bit in the blender as well and see which one works best but I believe 1024 or even 512 is gonna work like a char um, and um, I believe this is it for this episode I just have to delete this one oh not there. and give it a value of 512 I don't really need to do anything about it um, so one other thing is you have ray tracing enabled right so you have probably something like uh, ray tracing dot force so you'll probably have something like this all the reflections everything's ray traced we don't really need that so we can come in here r dot ray tracing r uh, dot force all effects to zero and we should copy it okay we don't need it and then go ahead into the config uh, default engine so it's a render based thing yeah in the uh, script engine dot render settings we need it to be zero so control v r dot ray tracing dot force all ray tracing effects zero so that way we'll make sure that ray tracing is not um, enabled I mean it is enabled but you won't really see it in here you can easily use it uh, only in GPU light mass uh, and that's pretty much it we have a lot of problems we don't have reflections in it we will have to optimize the scene a lot and we'll have to package the game we'll have to test the game on our device we'll have to implement some UI we'll have to um, I mean we'll have to do a lot of different things for this part but this is the solid point of creating uh, ArcViz package for a mobile for Android and iOS and I hope it will help a lot of people um, if it helped you please hit that like button and have a great day bye